What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I've got a Medela milk warmer and uh, this guy, it's not heating up, it's got some issues. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look. There's some interesting things about these Medellas. In past videos, I told you guys that heating elements are all on or all off. That was generically speaking and it was also referencing uh, some of the earlier generations of medical equipment. Gen 1. Well, I got a whole video on generations of medical equipment that I'm going to do very soon. I swear to you guys, I'm working on it. I uh, just got too many things in the fire. However, this is not a Gen 1 piece of equipment. This one is actually kind of special. These are very intricately designed pieces of equipment. And they do not take very much electricity. It says that it's 100 to 240 volts. 2.5 amps so at 2.5 amps 120 volts if it was all on for this heating element it would have to be like 40 or 60 ohms something like that a pretty high ohms amount so if this device isn't heating up we have to put our multimeter on ohms and we're going to check the heating element but if that heating element isn't at that 40 or 60 ohms i'm, I'm it might be 40 some ohms if it's not there and it's much lower, then normally I say, hey, that heating element needs to be changed out. These Medellas are a little bit different. They're special. Now you can see how I just kind of took that guy apart. Very neat. I love the design. They put a lot of time, energy, and money into the this mold. Super cool. I dig that. So anyway, it just clamshells apart. This side here has a solenoid. See? Boop, boop, boop. A couple little solenoids here that allow it to open and close and on this side we have the heating element so this this machine is not heating up first step we check for continuity on our leads and then by placing the leads down and inside the pin connectors we get 112 ohms hmm it's interesting that is extremely odd. Okay, it doesn't matter. So the thing is, is these heating elements are traditionally around six ohms, six. There it is, six ohms. So why did I get a different value when I went across this little thermal disconnect? You see, that little thermal disconnect right here is at 100 and 50 ohms. That is a bimetallic strip, which means there's two different metals, they're put together, and what happens when that metallic strip heats up, it, with it being two different types of metals, they expand and contract at different rates. And what that does is it creates a curve. So you got two different metals, one is expanding faster than the other, and what it does is it curves as the one metal is expanding faster. And that curve basically creates a spring or a disconnect, which pushes against two contact points and opens them up. And that is a thermal disconnect. Now, every single one of these units that has a heating element is definitely going to have some sort of thermal fuse or thermal disconnect. This should be a resetting thermal disconnect. And a resetting thermal disconnect should disconnect if it ever overheats and then go back to normal as soon as it cools off. Well, that means that this is supposed to be a straight piece of metal and you can see that it is 200 and some ohms. So that is clearly my problem. It should be close to zero ohms across here. But as I've said in other videos, the heating element should be all on or all off, which means if it was going to be correct, it should be at about 40 ohms. It's sitting at six ohms. That certainly is fascinating. It looks like it's brand new. I checked with other units and they are supposed to be six ohms. That means that this little guy right here heats up very quickly. It's got very low resistance in that heating element and it pulses. It uses pulse width modulation to heat up this heating element. Now, I have never taken one of these Medela pumps apart but if it was just a relay that clicks on and clicks off for this heating element, for one, since it's heating up milk, it would heat up way too quick, right? It'd heat up way too quick and then it would shut off 
and they would heat up way too quick. So guys, it's going to pulse electricity to this very low resistance heating element, and if it ever gets too hot, you have this thermal disconnect in here. Now it's in a plastic case. If it wasn't for this thermal disconnect, if it failed for any reason, if it failed closed, this heating element, let's say the fan itself quit working, then the heating element would heat up all the immediate plastic very quickly and it would melt this upper casing. It would just dissolve this upper casing into a big schmoo. So we have a thermal disconnect here. The fan is right here. You can see the fan actually gets pretty dirty. See the backs of the blades? Yeah, those fans get pretty dirty. But if it ever failed, you have this thermal disconnector right here. So that is the heating element. We know it pulses electricity because at six ohms, it would be way higher than 2.5 amps. 2.5 amps is nothing, super low. That's pretty interesting. I'm, I'm kind of fascinated by it actually. And we are gonna go ahead and we're gonna open it up. And let's take a look at the inside of this bad boy. It's got a uh, number two Phillips on the bottom. We've got four fasteners, very easy to take apart. And it just happens that I have never taken one of these apart before. I know I say that a lot, but as you guys all know, there's certain items that break very often and you're gonna deal with them. And there's some items that only certain people deal with. And that would be the, the biomeds that normally take care of labor and delivery. They normally deal with these pumps or these uh, heaters. I don't normally deal with them. Here we go. And I can see that it's got a special IEC on the back. So if you ever have one of these power cords and you're turning in a machine, do not turn in this machine with a power cord. Save that power cord, okay? Those things are kind of rare. And let's see, it goes up and inside it. Interesting. Okay, so we have a DC switch mode power supply here. Very cool. So that would go along with what I said with it switching its power on and off with PWM. It's going to use this this uh, switch mode power supply to do that and it's much easier to switch on and off DC power than AC. Let's just take this lower plastic off and as we go I'm gonna figure out what the plastics for because at the moment I'm not really sure it kind of looks like a reservoir of some sort. Very large quality screws. I dig that. And let's see, I got two fasteners up here. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this uh, IEC power input. And the ground, there we go. Okay, so now I can take this bottom cover and we can sit off to the side. So switch mode power supply, that is actually a pretty common part right there. I believe that is a pretty generic power supply super easy to get so if you have one of these that's not turning on I would go there first now the advantages of power supplies like this are yes it's much easier to regulate the voltage especially with pulse width modulation but also it separates the incoming mains from anything else so it creates a level of, a level of separation or isolation very cool stuff okay, let's go ahead and pull out this connector and, all right, I got some ribbon cables here. I definitely gotta be a little bit gentle. And right here, I have my main controller. Pull this guy out. Ribbon cable. Wow, look at all these cables. Who knew that the inside of one of these was so complex? I'm gonna just go ahead and disconnect them all and we will go over what all of these little guys do. I have, there we go, a little zip tie holding it there, and there we go. All right, wow, this base is fascinating because it just appears to be like a plastic weight. There's no channels for air to go. It just appears to be weight 
probably because they want it to feel like more quality but it is a composite plastic composite of some sort anyway here's the main controller and let's see that means that right here the switch mode power supply is going to come up here this is my power input and this guy here is going to be my driver for the heating element correct yes correct right here okay so this guy plugs in down here and it goes up to the top which is my heating element Wow, very complex overly complex you can see my little computer for the display it's actually on the back side of that PCB and it's going to talk Let's see I've got a ribbon cable right here for the buttons all these membrane buttons and that's going to connect down to this side and that's going to communicate over here for the CPU fascinating so yeah I think that's just a weighted base interesting system of power supply and it does look like a generic one it's a CUI incorporated VMS 16024. Outputs 24 volts, 6.6 .6 amps. All right, interesting. So this heating element here is uh, switching on 24 volts. So what we should be able to see is if I had this thing together, we could hook up an oscilloscope and we could actually probe right here and we should see pulse width modulation for the heating element. Interesting enough, there you go. And the pulse width modulation is controlled by your chips right here on your driver board. Good stuff. Okay, well, there you have it folks. That is the Medela milk warmer. I, I had it partially apart already, but uh, that's okay. Kind of saved us a little bit of time fascinating stuff the little heating element in here two and a half amps total is what this guy pulls that's extremely low to the aid it's that 24 volt dc switch mode power supply that is rated for 6.6 .6 amps pulses electricity here to this heating element the heating element heating element is only at six ohms makes sense since it's only 24 volts you want to keep the ohms as low as possible that way there you can get as much efficiency as possible good stuff anyway this guy here is defective based on this uh, it's a temperature limiting read switch the read switch disconnects it just never reconnected they do have a life cycle a certain amount of cycles and apparently us probing in on it also changed the ohms values it was open 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 but as it cooled off as I transported it as I probed the back of it with my uh, meter leads it got to 200 and some ohms. There's no way it's gonna heat up at 200 and some ohms. This guy's defective. This is the part that's bad. There you have it. All right, guys, that is the Medela <laughs> milk warmer, and it's defective, but it's good tear down. Hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned. I got some other crazy videos I'm gonna start working on tonight.